Hey guys, it has been a minute since I have done a video touching on goaltenders, and I get it every single day in my stream, questions in my chat, Naw, Dawes or Hoffer, like, you know what I mean, like, there's just, it's just all the time, and I thought I'd make a video going over my personal top five in the game right now, so that you guys know that, you know, you have an end game squad, you're just looking for that last final piece, which should be your goalie. Um, and then, uh, you know, giving you guys the, you know, based on the numbers, okay? Because here's the one thing I want to discuss, guys. Your goaltender will not matter if you are giving up constant cross-ice one-timers or breakaways, things like that. It will not matter. It all depends on how you play, how well you play defense, okay? There's obviously going to be times where your goaltender lets in bad stuff. If you have a low-rated goaltender, if you have one that's a bit shorter, you don't know the meta, that kind of stuff. That's all understandable, but I, like, the amount of times I see guys blaming goaltenders, but then if I go and watch their clips, it's literally just a wide-open one-timer. Like, no 99 is going to stop those, and if they do, it's one in a, once in a blue moon. So I want to go over my top five again, and I want to discuss what makes a good goaltender. So um, right now in this game, this year, uh, I spoke to Ben Ross last summer in regards to goaltenders, and he brought up something that I thought was pretty interesting, and that's that the aggression stat is no longer um, a rating. It's a personality trait. So essentially uh, what that means is that your your goaltender, um, his aggression, I'll show you right here, we'll go with, uh, whoops, one second here. Um, it'll basically determine how they actually play. It's more of a personality trait. So we'll take Mike Richter right here. So you see on the, on the right here, his aggression is 79. Okay, so from what my experience of playing this game, played thousands of games, uh, my experience is that anything under 80 is where you want to be right around you know 70 to 80 is kind of the golden range for aggression why I say that is because your goaltender will play differently when his aggression goes up so last year what what happened was uh, as the game progressed and all goaltenders went up in rating his aggression went up too because it was treated as just another attribute but it's actually a trait and a personality like I said so higher aggression, 99 aggression, was not a good thing. What it meant was that they are the most aggressive that they can possibly be in the framework of the game. So if you go back to NHL 19 and you and you play a game or watch a game, if you watch a 2-on-0 or a 2-on-1 or even a breakaway, you'll notice the goaltender will come way out of his crease, and it's basically an easy tap-in goal. You could literally pass it from almost the point on a 2-on-1, and it would basically go in. So... Um, and that wasn't how it was supposed to be intended, but this year they fixed it. So aggression isn't supposed to scale up with everything else, which is great. Now, what happens? So if you have someone who has really low aggression, we'll take Sean Burke, for example. See how his aggression 66? It means that he will sit in the net further. Okay, he will he will not come out and challenge the puck. So why would that be good? Because normally, if you're not challenging angles and whatnot, that isn't very good in real life. So in this game, what it will mean is that they can get across the ice and across their crease quicker because they're not so far out. Okay, because if you're cutting down an angle by a ton and you're way out of the top of the crease, going left and right, you're still going to leave this wide open hole. So here is, in terms of what goaltender will work for you, because there are two types of goaltenders now. If you are someone that gives up one-timers consistently, okay, if that is the goal that you see go in the most, you need someone with a lower aggression. If short side wristers and point shots are what you are giving up the majority of the time, you might want to look for someone that has more aggression. They challenge the play. Short side wristers are what will eat up goaltenders like Sean Burke. However, the meta this year is pretty much all just cross-ice one-timers. That's why the low-aggression goaltenders have been so popular. Now, before I go any further and, and actually give you my top five, I want to give you guys some cheaper options because, again, these are going to be extremely expensive as they are some of the best in the game. And one of them is actually uh, one that I did not expect but is actually really good. So I currently use the 91 Mike Smith because, again, I don't really care about my goaltender. If I play well enough defense, I'll win the majority of the games that I win uh, or that I play, and I win – much more than I lose. So uh, we'll go with uh, Mike Smith. He's 6'4", 220. His stats are all great. The ones you want to focus on the majority of the time are glove high and positioning. The reason being is glove high is how you're going to stop short side wristers. And positioning is what really, um, in my opinion, and from what I'm understanding from the devs, is what 
keeps the goalie from getting um, kind of lost and will actually track the play correctly. And then aggression again, perfect right around under 80. That's where you want to be. So this costs 70K. If we go and look at, we compare price um, in terms of what, you know, 69. Yeah, so 70K will get you a really, really fantastic goaltender, one that you really don't need to upgrade from in my opinion. But, uh, you know, if you have millions of coins to spend, that's what this video is for. Another good option that is kind of low-key is Martin Jones. Um, you know, in real life, he kind of sucks, which sucks for my Sharks. But this Martin Jones has actually played pretty well for me. I've used him quite a bit, and he's turned out pretty good as well. There's another one, Ukapeka Lukanen. Um, six foot four again, same kind of thing as a little bit lower aggression. These guys are all fine for you. This one's a little bit more expensive. I believe UPL is actually right handed, so his gloves on the opposite side, which isn't something that's crazy effective, but it can mess with people a little bit. Other than that, uh, this Joel Hoffer again is super expensive, but we're going to get into all of the end game cards and the ones that you want to focus on right now. So here is the top five goaltenders. In NHL Hut, based on attribute, size, and preference. Let's get into it. So starting at number 5, it is the 97 Connor Hellebuck. There are multiple options here. You can get the playoff one. You can get the, um, the team of the season one. It doesn't really matter. 83 aggression, so a little bit higher than where you want to be. He will be a little bit more aggressive, but his stats are all fantastic. And he's six foot four. Um, he's going to play great for you. Anytime I've run into him, he's played very well. Uh, if we're looking in terms of the pricing point of what you're about to pay in under 400 for the. Um, the playoff one, and guys, the 97 is fine. You do not need to blow your bank and go after and get you know the the team of the season 550k for a goaltender that can go up plus two. Don't really worry about that. So number five is the 97 Connor Hellebuck. Number four is the 96 Justice Anunin, six foot four again. So six foot four is kind of the minimum. Um, anything under that, you're kind of getting into that spot where he's going to get burned. Your goaltender can get burned by short side wristers and other shots like that if you go up high. And again, I want to explain something before I get into this card. The reason why size is so important is this game. Um, a guy that has a higher stat, so let's take glove high for example. If you have a higher glove high, frame by frame, your goaltender will move his glove hand faster than someone with lower. So whoever has a higher glove high will have a better glove. That is that is 100% confirmed. The higher the stat, the better the goaltender. However, the, the reason why it's so different... Six foot four and above is where you start noticing incidental contact saves. They will make saves that they might have missed because of their stats, um, but they will hit their shoulder because they're just big. It's just fit. It's just you know. It's just life. It's just how how it works. Okay. Um, so a bigger goaltender will give you an advantage because they just fill up more of the net and they don't need. They can compensate for lower stats. It's always how it's been in Hut for the last like five years, and until that's changed, that's how it still is. So six foot four is kind of the cutoff. Um, um, but there are some other cards that are a little bit below at six foot three that might actually be half decent. So we'll talk about this one first. The sixty four Justice Anunin glove high and positioning at ninety four ninety five, which is fantastic. His agility and speed is high as well, which is nice. And then that aggression at seventy two is perfect in my opinion. A fantastic card, and he does check in at number four on the list in terms of pricing point. Uh, again, he is right around three fifty, a little bit cheaper than Hellebuck, which is great because he's slightly better. Coming in at number three is one that many people probably aren't expecting or just haven't seen on the market, and that's the 93 Miko Koskinen. He's six foot seven, 93 glove high, 94 positioning, and 80 aggression. He's a fantastic build and six foot seven. Um, like there, there isn't much better. The only problem with this card is that you're, it's going to be almost impossible to find them. There's just so few of them on the market. I mean, right here, there's one for 200K. This is a fantastic buy. If I literally had the coins, I would buy it right now. I think that people are underestimating him because he's only 93. Um, but no, his stats are all well enough fine, and he's six foot seven. That makes a gigantic difference. And he checks in at number three on my list of the top five goaltenders in Hockey Ultimate Team. Number two is the 96 overall Ben Bishop. 6'7", 97 glove high in positioning. He's got almost borderline perfect stats. The only thing I don't like is his 84 aggression. He is a little bit more aggressive than most of the other goaltenders you will see in this game. And he can get burnt by the one-timer, but he's so big that he's going to make up for it almost the entire time. 
honestly, him and Koskinen, I think, are like almost perfect. I think Koskinen, if he was just a few stat points higher, he would legit be the best goaltender in the game. But because he's only 93, Bishop has, a, uh, you know, his stats are just a little bit higher, and that's why I've got him at number two. As uh, again, his only knock is he might be a little too aggressive with the way how this game is played, how NHL 20 specifically is played. The problem is, is that he is going to be expensive. Like you are going to pay a premium because it is Ben Bishop. Four eighty nine is the cheapest. Although again, he is the second best goaltender in terms of build and size in this game. And then number one, it's the ninety seven Jacob Markstrom. Honestly, all season long, Markstrom has been one of the best goaltenders in the game. Whether it be his winter national card, his All Star card. All of them have been fantastic, and this one is no different. He is almost the perfect, or he is the perfect build. Under 80 aggression, 99 positioning. His glove high is only 90, uh, 94, but again, if he gets his 99, he'll bump it up to a 96. So if you get the team of the season one, you're, you're laughing. These, this card would be legitimately perfect for how this game is played, but again, unfortunately, you are going to see that people have caught on. He's about a million right now for his team of the season. In my opinion, you don't need that one if you can find a 97 or a 96 like this 96 Jacob Markstrom right here that one's fine as well and you pay you know quite a bit less 549 there's a reason why he's so expensive and in my opinion he is the best goaltender in this game and again if you are lucky enough to have his uh his team of the season you're gonna you know he will eventually go up to a 99 guys so this would be honestly the best in my opinion now, there is one other thing I want to talk about, and that is, um, you know, there's a few cards that are just super talked about, and that would be uh, Nigel Dawes. Uh, for one, he's six foot five. Nigel Dawes is one of the better cards. The problem is, is I think he's kind of getting priced out. Um, six foot five, honestly, is aggression 61. A lot of people ask me about this. His glove high only being 90 and his aggression being 61. I think if people notice that you're playing a Nigel Dawes and shoot upstairs in the short side wrister situation, you're going to have a lot more success. That's why I don't really think he's in the top five right now. He's obviously an extremely popular pick. Um, but again, I think that there are better options, just like the other four that I just went over. But there are tons of cheaper options. Like again, this 93 Mike Smith is fantastic, guys. For anyone that's struggling with coins, please get this card. So guys, let me know who you're using in net, and again, thank you for watching. If you have any other questions in terms of goaltenders, please let me know in the comments section down below, and please subscribe if you haven't already for daily NHL content. I'll see you guys tomorrow.